Hi everyone! I'm painting a wildflower. Now this is a full step-by-step -step tutorial on Patreon if you want to follow along but I'm going to show you how I paint this green beetle. Some of the wildflowers that's growing around us here in our area. So I started off just dropping in some of Viridian green and then the legs. I mainly use some paint grey and I mix some of the Van Dyke green with that mix so that it's not too black. It just changed the colour of the paint grey so it's not too bland. So sometimes just mixing a little bit of blue or a little bit of pink with the paint grey, it just changed the whole pigment completely but it gives a bit of an interest to your painting. So I use a brush with a fine tip. This is a Kum Memory Point brush and I think it's a number zero brush that I have there. And then I just go around all these sections with this dark paint gray mix and I make sure that I go in quite dark at this stage because I don't want to go back and forth all the time. Except if I layer with watercolors and I want a transparent watercolor, that's when I want to use a lot of layering techniques in my painting. This beetle, when I looked closely, had beautiful, cool, glittery details on the shell. I'm not sure what beetle this is, what type of beetle it is. I'm not a fan of insects in my house, so I don't mind them outside in the wild as long as they're not in my house but it had the most beautiful colors on so i thought that viridian green will be a perfect green to use mixed with some transparent yellow or some nickel as a yellow which is my favorite yellow you should check it out it's very beautiful um, I use that very often. And then the new color that I uh, recently tried is the Van Dye Green, which is very similar to Perylene Green from Daniel Smith. A little bit different, but very similar. So you can use either or those two greens if you want to paint along. And the line drawing and all the supplies are listed on the $3 tier on Patreon. We started doing that recently and it will just help us support our channel including our YouTube channel so that we can keep on giving uh, or painting and providing everyone with some videos and share our beginner tutorials with you. And for this a mix I also use some of my yellow ochre with a drop of paint grey. Alternatively, you can use a drop of the green mix that I have on my palette there just so that it's not too maybe bland for you. We're trying to create beautiful colors on this beetle. So I really tested colors, uh, different textures and different detail than what I normally use on this tutorial. It was quite fun to mix different colors with my paints gray and also to test this new color, the Van Dyke green from um, Daniel Smith. This time of the year, we have the most magnificent carpets full of flower all over the place. Everywhere you look, there's just flowers, flowers everywhere. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I often share photos when I take Mr. T for a walk. He absolutely hates it when I take my phone out my camera out and I take photos of all of the insects and flowers and then I come home and I paint a lot of them. Also this paper is quite a rough watercolor paper. I will also uh, share a photo of that for you so that you can test it if you are interested. It's not a paper that I normally paint on so it's more of a, a I would say cold press watercolor paper but with a little bit more texture. I saw it recently when I ordered paper for some classes that I'm going to host very soon and I thought I want to test it out before I let my students paint on that. For the green mix that I shared there, I dropped in some of the Viridian green with the mix of the yellow, uh, sorry, the nickel as a yellow. So that mix gives you a beautiful, um, I would say luminous type of green yellow mix and it's it just it's beautiful. I don't normally paint with Viridian green but with some yellows if you mix it nice and you play around you'll get beautiful uh, colors so test it out a little bit uh, for yourself on some paper before you use it. Again I go in with a very thick mix so that I don't have to go back and forth and uh, add more color. I also think that a 
you know, an archival ink pen will create beautiful detail on some of these parts that you want to highlight or darken on your insect. So, but I just went in with some paint and the Van Dye green and the mix of uh, Viridian green with paint gray gives it a beautiful, dark, beautiful color. And then I just go around and I wiggle my brush and I create these little markings on this shell so that some of the paper still shine through. So all of the bottom layers will shine through each layer that I'm adding at the moment. I also want this beetle to look a little bit more rounded and realistic and not just flat on the paper. So I really follow the shape of all the detail that I can see. And this makes such a difference to your painting by allowing some of the highlighted sections to shine through each layer that you're going to paint over these details that I'm adding in at the moment. So for this, a very dark mix on the body of this little insect. I want to try my best to use only watercolors to create all of these little detail that I can see on the shell, especially the colors especially the shine on the shell of this beetle is it shell i think you call it a shell i'm not sure but whatever it is the body of this insect so again i just go around all of these little sections and i'm dropping in that beautiful yellow green mix that i'm creating with the van dyke and viridian green with the nickel as a yellow or transparent yellow i also have hansa yellow on my plate but that i use for all of the petals for this wild flower that uh, you can see that I busy was busy painting. So these are all of the colors that I used. Just put the names on there for you so you can see. And my tube of Viridian Green is very full because I don't use it often. But by mixing in some yellows, and you have to play around with this, you can really create beautiful uh, colors with this viridian green it's not a very popular color in my paint box but i do think that for certain flowers and for certain insects it's quite beautiful even for certain birds uh, i mean i can just think of the sunbirds and the sugar birds in my garden uh, some of them have that beautiful green color on their bodies so I'm really trying to create those little markings just by dabbing my brush, wiggly bits everywhere, taking my time. And it is weekend while I'm doing this voiceover, so I can't wait. It was a really difficult week. We lost Wobbles, uh, one of our wild birds, the kestrel took him and they had babies so there are two eggs in a nest and poor Wobbles is gone you'll see um I do have a video of Wobbles uh, somewhere uh, or if you follow me on Instagram I post some of these little photos often but he is now gone luckily the female is on the eggs and I'm just very happy that we'll have more babies in our garden so hopefully they hatch <laughs> Hopefully, I hope so. But again, I just go around all of these parts with a very thick mix because as I paint and the paint dry, it dries much lighter. That's what watercolor does. So just go around all of these sections with a very, very thick mix. And as you can see, just by creating and following the shape of this beetle, it already starts to look a little bit more alive. <laughs> Not really alive, but a little bit more uh, detailed and 3D uh, than it would have been flat on the paper if we didn't add all of this, these shapes. And by following all of the detail and the exact shapes that we can see on the reference photos, we can create a little bit more of a realistic beetle and so I just go around all of these parts again with some of my darker mixes. I always start off with a much, uh, water, much more watery mix and then as I paint and add more detail and I get closer to the end of my painting, my mixes are so much more thicker so it's more of a buttery to a creamy consistency and that way you can just add 
a lot more detail than when you start with some watery mixes. I also like to layer my watercolor paintings, especially some of my flowers. So it all depends, but I do go a lot thicker when I get to the end of my painting so that I don't have to go back and forth every time. I will also already know what I'm going to and where I have to add more detail so it makes it a lot more easier. And then when I come back at a later stage and I notice that some of the parts dried a lot lighter or maybe I want to darken certain sections, that's when I will go in with a much thicker mix and try to create the more 3D look than what I would normally paint in, in the beginning. Now I'm adding in all of the detail around the top part of this beetle. We're getting much closer to the end of this painting. Going to add a bit more detail and then we're finished. I still leave some of the lighter sections to shine through. It just makes it look a lot more interesting than have a solid black beetle. The way we're painting it now, it's just a lot diff more different because we're creating a lot more texture on the paper with this little painting. I love painting all of these little insects lately. Um, I don't normally paint a lot of insects. I do like painting birds. I've been painting another little bird that is in our garden it is a cape white eye a beautiful little bird so that will be an upcoming tutorial as well and i will make a shorter version for youtube but uh, for now we'll just paint the insect and i also painted a quick little loose uh, little ladybird <laughs> which was so cute um, but yes um so the sad part is that Wobbles is no longer with us but the good part or the good side of the story is that we do have some of these babies in our garden and I hope you follow me on Instagram because you will see I, I share a lot of my garden and also of all of the animals in my garden with my um, followers on Instagram. I'm a lot more active on Instagram than on Facebook so if you would like to you can follow me there. I will link my Instagram account if you would like to follow me there. We have quite a lot of birds in the garden and I just told someone that the robin stole the sunbird's nest or the spot where the nest used to be and then when the birds, the all the little babies of the robin hatched, uh, the, the wobbles, the wagtail, stole the robin's nest. So it's like quite funny in this garden a lot of things are happening that are so funny it's so interesting to see but anyway back to the beetle so what i do is i just create all of those markings again and i want some of those lighter luminous greens and yellows that i painted in to shine through so i go around all of these sections with a much thicker consistency of my paint again just going around all of these parts darkening tonal values of certain sections just go back and forth until you're happy with the outcome. What I am going to do is I'm going to take a very watery mix of my nickel as a yellow or transparent yellow. It's the same pigment. And I'm going to go over all of these sections once the beetle is completely dry so that I can just brighten it up a little bit because I want to make sure because normally all these colors will dry much muted um, and bland. So I'm going to use some of that yellow just to brighten it up, maybe with a mix of the Viridian Green in, just to brighten it up a little bit. And then I'm going to finish it up with a little bit more of my darker, not a little bit more, but more of the pigment. I always say a little bit more or a little bit of this or etc, etc, etc. I have to stop. But this is the final painting. I hope you enjoyed this. And don't forget to subscribe and to press the bell button if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. I will see you soon.